Hey YouTube, how's everybody doing? Thanks for checking out another episode. Man, it seems like every couple hours we have more storylines, more roster mania stuff. It seems like there is always a hot topic going on in competitive Call of Duty right now. And that doesn't stop with the episode of the podcast last night that had Crim6 on. So there are a few things in here that I really want to touch on. First of all, Crim does touch for like a minute or two on just how toxic the environment was last year with TJ Haley and Dashy and Scump and Karma and himself on that Optic Gaming Squad. That's obviously what we're going to cover first. He then goes on to say a little bit about what might have been wrong with the Minnesota Rocker and why they didn't really win a match for the last five months of the season. So we'll cover that also. But with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead. Let's watch this first clip here where Krim really does first start to talk about the environment. I think it was Pac-Man asked him, what was the least favorite team that you've been on? And this was his reply. Oh, I said before Sweat, before Sweat's question, Puckett says, Krim, what's the least favorite team you've played on? Easy. Uh, that team of Zinni and uh, Octane. <laughs> Enough said there, dude. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> nah, maybe last year. Nah, I would say the end of last year was actually way worse. The end of last year, after Miami, they those three sort of like looked at us. Because like, they made fun know, of you. like Yeah, they literally openly made fun of me all the time yeah and, it was, it was and, and they kept saying shit like bro you have a low kd you don't know what the fuck you're talking about and i'm like sitting there like well then why the fuck are you listening to damon you know? <laughs> and i'm not roasting damon here it's like damon had the same kd i did or worse and it's like i'm but the things i'd be saying was like not about kd at all or like playing you know that we need to play kills here or we need to stop dying here it'd be shit like you know, let's plant the bomb on this angle. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'd be saying stuff like that, and be like, they'd be like, your KD sucks. And I'm like, bro, what the fuck are you talking about? We're going over, like, pre-nades here, dude. You know? And it's like, it'd be the most, and obviously, like, whether that happened or not, it would be the most irrelevant shit. Our, our team, <laughs> for us to get third, like, people talk about me shitting the bed on Sundays. Like, I don't even fucking care. I think getting third with that team, like, we hated each other. Like, really fucking bad. Like, they started openly making fun of me, like, every single fucking day. Yeah. And, I remember that. that was, it was yeah. Really, it was like the culture of the squad. They just saw rest of you. They, they loved yeah. each other. And they just toasted Yeah. Them. Yeah. All right. So, obviously, there's a gazillion storylines. But for anybody that really followed that Optic squad last year, towards the end of the year, you obviously knew how bad it was. And just like they said, openly on Twitter, just everybody talking back and forth, roasting Krim, when it does seem like he was probably the one that cared the most and he was trying to get everybody to do what they were supposed to do. And when you have those three, those three, he's talking about Scump and TJ Haley and Dashy kind of in their little pack. Even this year, going into this year, that's where a lot of that drama came from, like in the Dallas intro video. And then when Huntsman formed their squad, this was just kind of part of where all of this came from, the culture around that Optic Gaming squad towards the end of the year was absolutely pitiful. And I think it's one of the biggest reasons why you're seeing the responses that you're seeing out of Crim6 right now. And really, when I'm talking about those responses, I'm talking about this thread that he put out on Twitter yesterday. We did cover it in the Clayster was dropped video. But when he goes through and really goes off on Twitter about how upset he is and how it's pathetic that some team owners want to go to 4v4 just as a way of, of saving money. And I think that and even he talked about this with Clayster they did kind of say after Sunday that they were each other's like yin and yang, right? They just fit together perfectly. They have very similar stories where Clay has always been kind of that outcast. Like when it went to franchising, a lot of that EU team went over to Atlanta. Then the twins kind of separated and Clay was just there kind of thrown to the wolves. And then he finds Dallas and now that squad kind of does the same thing. In this scenario, their hands were four, so there's not really much that they could do about it. 
but you can just tell it. These are two similar players that all they want to do is win. So when it comes down to all these different topics, I think that's finally why you're seeing the outburst from Krim that you're seeing just because he feels like he finally found a family and a team that just wants to grind and their number one goal is just to win. And it's not about little clicks here and, and buddy partnerships over here. It's just all five people playing together for a, and towards a common goal. And now, unfortunately, Clayster has been dropped from that squad. So I get where he's coming from, but it's unfortunate that the end of the optic years, the true optic years, had to end the way that they did. One final topic that I do want to touch on here is it's been a major mystery to people. Like, why was Minnesota so bad? Like, what really happened with Minnesota? And I think that Krim gives us a little bit of insight here. What they told everybody that it was a pacing thing. They wanted to get around the map faster and they wanted to open up lanes. And it was strictly because of pacing. But I think Krim 6 dives a little bit deeper into that. So, I want to play you this minute or so long clip, and then we'll discuss a little bit afterwards. But I think it just sheds some light on a topic where everybody was kind of confused, like what happened with Minnesota? But then what about like you have, I'm trying to think who's like a flex who could say they're a sub and then. God or X. God or X. That's were much yeah. better throughout yeah. the season. You know what I mean? Or, or, uh. Or, or like silly could be like, yeah, I can run a sub. Yeah. You know what I mean? and, yeah. and, and that's, and that's where people get canned. Now I get what you're and, saying. And, and then that is where, why I'm fucking raging on Twitter about it. You know? Now I get what you're saying. It's yeah, like a yeah. team, a and, team and, and picks up like day, a... Yeah. Asim, like, Asim's stats are like terrible, you know, but at the <laughs> end of the day, no, 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 no. But at the end of the day, when I fucking play them and I literally have sent group DMs to them. He's in your I'll, fucking I'll, I'll, I'll get Asim. Alex, and and I, and this is when Goddard X was on the team, and Silly, and I'll literally DM them and be like, <clears throat> Jesus. I'll DM them, and I'll say, dude, I feel so fucking bad for you guys because Assault and Goddard X are not trying to win the game, and you <laughs> three are, and I can fucking see it, you know? <laughs> and I'll be like, if you three aren't frying, if you don't get a two-piece while trying to break a hill, you're never breaking the fucking hill. Well, and, that, and 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 that's why I like that's why it like sucks. So that right there, that's really the last thing that I wanted to touch on because it really did strike a chord for me. Just when he says like, if those three SMGs weren't absolutely frying as they're trying to enter hills, if they're not squad wiping a team, then they're probably gonna lose just because assault and got a Rex. As he says, now this isn't from me, but as he is saying that a lot of people are just playing for stats so that it looks better so that if one of these reconfigures or one of these realignments happen, now they can say, look at the stats that I had. Why would you drop me when these guys are dropping 0.7s or 0.75s or 0.8s or whatever? So just kind of touching a little bit on what might have been the problem for Minnesota. And I guess the politically correct way to put it would be that it probably was a pacing issue. But what goes along with that is that if you have a pacing issue, that means that two players might potentially be playing for stats rather than playing to win. I don't, that, that's coming from Krim. I see where he's coming from. I don't know if that's the true case or whatever, but I just wanted to touch on that because I thought it was something interesting. So with that, guys, if you're new around here, thank you so much for the support over the last few days. If you like these sort of videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Any comments, love the comments on these videos. Put them down below. I'm interested to see what you guys have to say on a situation like this. Leave a like, it helps the channel. Thanks as always. We will see you in tomorrow's upload.